can see that you're there. Hi, I think I got it. You got it. Excellent. That's good. Now, Peter was online, but he dropped out. Yeah, I, got, I got him online for a little while, but I think he's using a cell phone or something. It's actually a That's a bit of echo. Oh, hello, Peter. Oh, he's dropped out again. <laughs> I don't know what's going on, but it just keeps repeating. <laughs> we're, t we're stuck in a, a sort of Doctor Who ish temporal loop thing. Um, I think on a Google Plus page you can see a YouTube video that's being recorded of what we're doing. And oh, if you're okay. playing that, uh, there's a you know a significant delay, and then yeah. Okay, I'm gonna mute mine of that so that it doesn't keep saying the same thing again. That might hello, be. hello again. Hello. And I'm putting headphones on. Excellent. Okay, I can. And it seems to be working well. I can, I can hear you. There's no video coming through yet, Peter. Okay. That's it was right. working before. There. Is that better? No. Oh, wait. Uh, no that's yet. made it work. This is so clunky, but anyway. We'll see. <laughs> Sort of thing where if you're used to using it, it works well. I'll, I'll try leaving, turning off my video and turning it on again. No worries. Yeah, the only video thing I've used before this has been Skype, and that's yeah. like a one-on-one -on -one thing. So yeah, you can you can do Skype group chats, but uh, somebody needs to pay you know a huge amount of money or a certain amount of money to to make it run. I haven't done that. Okay, Peter is back. Um, we'll see. <sighs> no worries. I see. Is that working? Not yet. We can we can we can get going with you being audio, that's fine. Just just give me one more. It's gone. I don't know. <laughs> um, so you're in the States, Valentina? Yep, I'm in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, in the Northeast United States. I uh, I have been to Pittsburgh a number of times. It's a uh, it was a very nice, very nice visits all the time that, uh, that I've been there. I have some colleagues um, at, at Pitt. Um, yeah, and so I enjoy it there. Up on, I can't remember what floor in the Cathedral of Learning they all are, but um, it's, a, it's a gorgeous place. Have you been in Pitt for a, a long time? This is uh, sort of where you grew up and home? Yeah, I grew up here. Um, I actually went to college in central Pennsylvania. I went to Penn State, but I graduated a couple years ago. I worked there for a couple years, then I lost my job, and I moved, I moved back home with my parents, back to Pittsburgh. Yep. Yeah. So, so what did you do in college? I studied electrical engineering, okay. and I had a minor in engineering mechanics focusing on non-destructive valuation. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> so so non-destructive value, I had no idea that that was the kind of thing that one could minor in. Oh, my goodness. Now my video seems to have gone. Um, yeah. Oh. <laughs> I didn't oh, know I see you, fine, you can see me fine. I, I wonder whether... I've got something here where I can control the bandwidth, um, and I'm wondering whether I will adjust that down a bit in case anybody <laughs> that is a bit tricky. Because, okay. Okay, well, Valentina and I can see each other. Peter, you can see, can you see both of us? I can see both of you. Excellent. And we can't see you. Can't see you, but we can hear you. We can hear you. I've, just got, 
I've got an option where I can turn the, the camera off and it puts up the uh, picture of me from my profile instead. If that helps at all, but not oh, really. Why don't we do that? Um, we can see the the picture of you on the Yarra River there, if I'm yes. not mistaken. Yes, sir. Well, at least it was giving me that option before. No, no. It's, that option's gone now. <laughs> okay. yeah, we, can, we can hear this time. So, so let's let's get going anyway and uh, talk about some logic. And how, how has everything been going? Uh, good. How have you been finding the course so far? Uh, good. I've, I've been enjoying it. I've really liked the uh, huge number of different problems that we can work through and the way that we can get that feedback straight away with the fully worked out uh, truth trees and, and things like that. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's good. That's that's good to hear because this has been something that uh, we've been sort of struggling to figure out how best to do uh, because it's the kind of thing that you know when we started planning to do do the subject, we were thinking, oh, it would be fantastic if we could have this little program stuff where you work out trees bit by bit uh, and you can get feedback on how you're going and everything. And it turns out that. A, that's really complex to do in a way which makes sense uh, for all students, and it's really difficult to sort of plug into the Coursera back end. So we stepped back quite a lot um, to just say, well, look, we will, you know, get you to do some things and, you know, give you the feedback with, here's what a correct tree might be, or here's what a counterexample might be, or whatever. And it turns out that the feedback that we're getting from students is that still just getting that feedback quickly, uh, rather than you know, if you're an on-campus student, you know, doing this by yourself and coming to the tutorial next week, that still m does seem to make a bit of a difference for, for students. So you're finding that? Yes, definitely. Yeah, that's good. That's good yeah. to hear. Um, I had a whole lot of trouble with the proof trees in LLI1, but yeah. it got a lot better after I, after I did the quiz and the homework a whole bunch of times. I yeah. kind of figured it out through mistakes. That's good. I mean, it's it's the kind of thing that we um, uh, we are trying to figure out how best to uh, make the questions kind of graded. And the first the first cut, the first lot of three questions that we did in LLI one, uh, there was no doubt that the the learning curve was too steep. And, and we next time we're going to go around, we will start with some simpler questions, then some more complex questions, then some more complex questions. It's a bit tricky to uh, you know design these and feed these into the course era back end so that, uh, um, because what we want to do is we want, uh, with the homeworks, because there are some people that do the homeworks, I mean we can see when we look and see how people do this, there's some people that do the homeworks once, get a mark that they're happy with and then do a graded quiz, and then there's others who will do the homeworks again and again and again and again and again and again, and you can see, you know, for some of them they do it six times, some of them they might do it 12 <laughs> times until they get, you know, 10 out of 10 or whatever it is. Yeah. And, and so we want to uh, um, put enough example questions in there so that when you do them again and again and again, you don't just get uh, the same ones all over again. Hmm. But uh, it turns out that there's kind of a limit, um, the limit to how much you can do and put in the system and make it work. Um, and the surprising thing is it's not... Um, it's, as far as I can tell, it's not that there's any problem with their database of having 10,000 questions in there, but there is a problem in the back end of the database. We could stuff 10,000 things in there, it just means that we could never edit them again. Because uh, when you load the quiz at our end, it comes in a, a massive HTML table with everything. And, uh, you know, everyone's browser locks up uh, when you do this. So it means that we can only have. Uh, you know, about 20, 30 variants for any individual question and a limit to how many questions we might have. So we're trying to figure out how best to do this, but we do think uh, definitely making things graded uh, step by step so that you get useful feedback even if you're finding something really, really difficult and you haven't figured out how to put things together. Um, one, one question that, that I'm interested in is, uh, We've just decided, you know, one quiz for every week is how we've structured things so far, and we haven't made things any different from that. But one thing that might make a difference is if you, if we, for homeworks, we broke things out into, you know, here's a beginner quiz, here's a more advanced quiz, or something, or beginner homework and a slightly more advanced homework, so that you could just do the beginner ones and submit them and get some feedback without, um, 
uh, without getting discouraged that you have to do through you know the second half of this stuff, which is all more complicated than you might uh, be able to do. Do you think that would make a difference, or would that make things more complicated? Uh, with the number of attempts that we have, uh, I think that sometimes what I do is I'll just do the easy ones and then submit it, and if I feel like I'm doing well on the easy ones and just yeah. not worrying about the hard ones, so then I'll go do the other the, the mere fact, um, when, when we were talking about this, I was thinking that the mere fact that you might get, as a result of that, get, uh, you know, 5 out of 15 or something might just feel discouraging or something, and actually getting 5 out of 5 on a beginner thing uh, might actually just just feel better or something, but uh, if, if you're using it like that, that's great. I kind of like the idea more of splitting it up if you'd have different quizzes by content, like if you'd have a couple true false or a couple multiple choice on facts and then a couple just on trees and that's it cuz i like i like to watch the the lectures and it would be nice to be able to do like watch two lectures on say theory and then do the questions and then another lecture on trees and just do a quiz on that so you can kind of keep it straight as you're going yeah okay that'll be helpful to think about in the future we won't be able i mean all the all the um, the homeworks are now up for for the rest of this subject. Um, yeah, that's helpful feedback. Cool. Did did you guys have questions about what we've done so far? Um, not too much, really. I've just I I've been taking extensive notes on the on the lectures. It's just like write it all down so I remember. Um, I don't know. I've just started the mathematics part. Hmm. 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 Um, cool. Peter, how about you? Uh, I don't really have any questions. Uh, I mean, for me, a lot of what we're doing is revision from when I started at Melbourne Uni, 2005-2006. Uh, sure. And uh, if, if there are any questions, then I'd probably just bring them up in the forums instead. And yeah, I tried to think of some questions for the Hangout, but um, more than anything, I just wanted to, uh, to thank you for running the course and doing such a great job with it. And, you know, all the effort that you and, and Jenna put into the course, and uh, not just you two, but also uh, people like Graham Priest. Sure, sure, sure. It's been it's been a, a, an interesting journey for us, and it's it's been really encouraging to see all of the kind of feedback. It's um, has been a lot of work, but it's for us. It's uh, gratifying to see people all over the world um, get really excited and interested. Mm -hmm. And uh, I mean, in one sense, I'm we're teaching you know, more students all in one go in a different way than I have taught in my 10 years at Melbourne uh, in first year, in all my first year logic classes added up, which is incredible. Uh, I mean, it's a, it's a very different sort of thing. I have no contact with, you know, 95% of the students, as it were. Uh, uh, you know, it's only, only, I think it's only about 2%, it's somewhere between 2 and 5% of the active people are actually, you know, involved in the forums. Uh, a lot of people are just, you know, cruising around um, uh, and you know engaging with it in their own kind of way. Um, but but the other interesting thing for us is it's made us revisit some of the things that we do with our on-campus students uh, because thinking about the kinds of I mean we're using the videos now for our on-campus students for you know different kinds of revision and stuff. We still go through stuff in lectures with them. Uh, but we are beginning to revisit how we use the other sorts of electronic resources for our students on campus too, which has been kind of exciting. Uh, but it's, um, yeah, uh, we know we haven't got everything right yet, but I mean, we'll, we'll be offering it again next year and we'll see how we go. Uh, are there any suggestions uh, just having, uh, which of, so, so Valentina, you were saying you were looking at the mathematics section at the moment. Mm -hmm. uh, have you had a glance at any of the other special topics yet, or is the mathematics the first one that you're into? Um, I pretty much just decided I'm going to be going through all of them, and I started at the top, and we're working our way down. Okay, okay well, good luck with this. I hope uh, I hope you uh, get through as much as you want to. Um, it, it is a tight schedule to, to uh, get through everything. There's a lot of stuff there. Um, mm -hmm. There was a lovely thread in the forum where somebody said, oh my god, there's you know 200 pages here. What the hell do you expect? Uh, 200 pages in three weeks, this is impossible, especially for those of us that are you know, doing something else with our lives while we're doing this. Um, the expectation, I mean, we were always thinking, oh my god, if you finish three, that's great. That's, that, that, that counts as being perfect. Uh, mm -hmm. But also, 
when we were originally um, planning out our work for the course, we thought you know, maybe we would have five to you know five to eight pages of notes for every section, and uh, the notes just grew as we were writing them. We thought, no, we cannot. Uh, there are some people that, that like learning by means of reading, and mm -hmm. there will be some people for whom the notes will be more primary and those video lectures will be more secondary. And it just, you know, when we started writing the notes for LLI1, we realized, oh my goodness, uh, um, you know, these notes can be, you know, a useful adjunct to, to the rest of everything, and they just kept on growing, uh, which means that some of them, especially chain sections for mathematics and uh, uh, actually, for all of mathematics and digital systems and uh, electronic engineering, they're, they're substantial pieces of work, 50 pages on each of them, almost. And uh, a lot of those go into more depth than she does in the lectures, uh, and don't expect that you need to go through absolutely everything in any of those sections in more detail, in, in all of the detail that's there. So, so the, the quantity is a bit intimidating. Uh, we will... Um, sort of preface that more sort of gently the next time around. But, mm -hmm. but don't feel like absolutely everything there needs to be, um, you know, swallowed and understood and digested and everything. Um, let, the, let the quizzes and stuff, the homeworks be your guide as to the kind of depth that we're expecting people to be able to understand. And some of it will be sort of background that will be great for you to, you know, contextualize stuff if that's helpful to you. And that's it. Does that make sense? Yeah. Um, I know what I do is I, I watch the lectures and then I go do the homework and if I don't understand something I'll go back, I'll read the notes Good. and I'll keep doing the homeworks. I, as I do, I take notes. Pretty much I write almost verbatim what's on the lecture. Oh, great. Because it, it just helps me learn. Yeah, but I'm also I'm balancing this class between two others mm -hmm. and, and a couple of things while searching for a job. So it's... Sometimes it's a challenge. Sometimes it's it's a nice distraction. Of course it is. So, um, uh, what are the just out of interest? What are the other two classes that you do? Astrotechnology from the University of Edinburgh and Digital Image Processing through, from the Northwestern University. Fantastic. That's great. Um, and so, I'm really curious as to the different sorts of motivations and backgrounds that people have. When doing, uh, you know, when engaging with stuff on Coursera and other MOOCs, um, is the is the sort of certificate uh, at the end is is that actually an important thing for you? Is that the kind of thing that would uh, you know put on a CV? And is that the kind of thing that potential employers are actually interested in, or is the sort of certificate at the end? more a kind of motivation which you know gives you something to, 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 to reach for or is it completely irrelevant or, or how would you describe how how the the you know assessment and the you know that kind of more official thing which distinguishes it just from a say a book club or you know reading a book or watching some TED talks or something like that mm -hmm. uh, how, how does that work for you um, for me right now, it's I, I decided to start taking the classes because it was all interesting material, but it, I also took a couple, I, had, I took a dynamics course, I took a statics course, a digital image processing course is mostly review, because all things I've done in my undergrad. The logic is, I saw that and I was just interested because, like, well, it it just was interesting, so I decided I'd go for it, and then I saw you got a second class, so I took it. <laughs> great, great. Well, um, we are thinking about uh, doing a third, uh, but it, it it won't be before the second half of next year. Uh, the way things are going, we're going to be running one and two again next year, and uh, but we we really um, we are really thinking actively at the moment about the difference between running the class and there being a particular time where you get the, uh, you know, you do some peer assessments and you um, uh, get the grades and you get a certificate at the end, and when it might make sense for the resources to still be publicly available. Uh, because we, we, uh, we've left Logic 1 open, and it turns out that there's still I don't know. I don't know the exact figures, but there's still at least a couple of hundred people signing up every week, uh, mm -hmm. joining Logic One, watching the videos, doing the the homeworks, 
uh, partly as provision for logic two, and partly because it's just there. And I mean, I'm tempted to think, well, just keep the things kind of available, and then there be particular times when we just have a cohort that's running through and you know participating in the forums and doing everything else. Uh, mm -hmm. We're still figuring out how um, how to do that and how to do that in a way which makes sense. But you know, for you, if if this material was all available just there uh, for you to stumble across and do at your own pace and do that, you know, homework quizzes, but there'd be no certificate at the end, would that still be as attractive to you? Do you think, or is there something about there being a bunch of people doing this week by week by week and there being a deadline? Mm, definitely. I, I love deadlines. I mean, I'm always motivated by deadlines. The, yep. the group aspect helps too, even if I don't always interact with a lot of students, but just kind of being in the now rather than just you know, stumbling across something on the internet that's been there a couple of years, no motivation to keep that time frame or anything. Yep. And I, I, I like this pressure of having to finish it by, by a certain time, otherwise I just never get it done. Yeah, yeah I, I enjoy the structure of it. Um, it would be kind of difficult to keep myself like uh, disciplined enough to yeah. take the class if it was just sitting there. Okay, great. It's, That's it's, helpful. Yeah. That's really helpful. Uh, so, uh, yeah. That's the kind of feedback we're getting from others as well. Uh, and so, you know, for us, I mean, there are some Coursera subjects that, you know, are now running, uh, you know, four times a year, six times a year, you know, going bang, all and uh, given Given my workload, given the other things that I'm doing on campus, I teach, you know, two, three other classes. Uh, I'm involved in the teaching of two or three other classes here every uh, each semester. Uh, there's no way that I can do that with the kind of involvement that I would like to have in this. Uh, I mean, I could just have this as a you know wind up, set and forget, where you know you just I, I'd be totally hands off. Uh, you know, we employ a TA. Uh, to do a little bit of stuff, and, and I suppose we could do that, but that's not particularly attractive to me. On the other hand, maybe that would be attractive to students. Uh, so I'm not really sure how we're going to do that, but that's an active discussion at Melbourne uh, about how we as a university um, finance this and how we as a university, how this plays within as a part of all of the other you know teaching that we do. But that's that's helpful to know that that kind of structure, that there's a positive thing uh, along with the kind of negative uh, grumbling, oh my goodness, why, why is there a deadline kind of structure that, that we do get as well from students, especially when the deadline gets closer and uh, you realize, oh my goodness, I'm not, um, I'm not going to get stuff, you know, email and time uh, and students, you know, ask for extensions and do all of the things that, that students do. Um, but that, that's helpful. Yeah. One of the things that helps a bit is having the soft deadline and the hard deadline. Yeah. Um, I, I'm not really too sure how much you're doing it in this subject because I've managed to meet the deadline every time, but um, in some of the other uh, Coursera courses I've done, um, some people will just miss that on um, deadline and then all of a sudden not get any marks when they're about to submit or, or something like that. Yeah. Having that deadline where you just lose marks a little bit at a time. Um, yeah. It doesn't work when you all of a sudden get all the answers in the internet, but a lot of the time staggering it all. The audio's, audio's cutting out there, but I, I got the gist of what you were saying. Um, yeah, in this subject, I mean, in LI1, we had the, I mean, when we figured out how the Coursera system works here, we eventually, uh, you know, changed things over so that there was this, you know, hard deadline, soft deadline a week later. And I mean, the aim is a uh, you know 10% graded, uh, you know, falling mark per day, um, basically to encourage people to get the quiz stuff in before they were doing the final because we think that's the right way to do it. And uh, the final needed to have a hard deadline because we need to wrap everything up. And we're going to do the same thing this time around. We've got the uh, uh, core deadline before the application deadlines, but still we're going to have to grade it. 10% you know, per day or something like that, whatever, I can't remember exactly how it's set up. Uh, but, but with the addition of two late days um, this time around, that we mentioned that in the last email, uh, that uh, given that there's so many this time um, things, there's five graded quizzes for the core things due at the same time, uh, obviously with a long deadline, uh, but there's going to be people that are leaving it to the last minute 
And, and so Coursera allows easily for us to say, well, how many late days does people want to have? And we said, okay, two late days, which means that for any quiz that you've, you're just about to miss the deadline for or you have missed the deadline for, you can trade in one of your late days and not get penalized for that. And so we say you can do that twice. Um, and so that, that will hopefully make things a little bit easier when you know, just life happens uh, to people without making it sort of indefinitely expensive. Um, yeah. We'll see how it goes. Mm. That would be nice to be able to use, because um, I know I've just had a whole bunch of things pop up in the last week. Like, I had a couple interviews to schedule, the death in the family. I wanted to go with the family to something else, and it's just like, things just happen. So it's nice to have a little bit of a, so a time to play with. Yeah, so because we've got, we've got the um, uh, there's always that kind of balance between uh, actually having the deadline, then having and 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 some things are done. Um, you know, the release of the certificates and everything like this is sort of contingent on stuff being done by then. And then you want to set the deadline as late as possible uh, before that to give everybody as much time as they need. But then, the more late that you set that, then the less flexibility there is in pushing things further. So, so you want to actually set the deadline a little bit earlier than it needs to be so that you can, so that people are planning towards that and then you can be flexible. And, and that kind of is always a balancing act. And, you know, we think that we've, you know, through years of experience, have learned how to do that in, you know, on-campus stuff because we know about our students, we know the kinds of things that's going to happen. But this is all new and we're yeah. sort of learning, learning all of that. Uh, so, uh, you want to be sort of flexible and generous. On the other hand, being flexible and generous to cohort of 30,000 people, uh, it's where, you know, 99% of them are not going to bug you, uh, not going to ask you with anything, they're just going to deal with it. And 1% of them are going to be, you know, vociferous. <laughs> um, that's, a, that's, a, that's a new way of, of learning that we have uh, to deal with. But it's good. Um, okay. I am going to be needing to, to go to my next meeting soon. Are there um, other thoughts, comments, feedback, anything else that you'd like for, uh, to let us know? I'm enjoying this class thoroughly, so That's I'll just keep doing it. If you offer a third one, I'll take it. <laughs> okay, well, we've got we to write, we've got we to process all of the feedback from one and two, and then talk with our superiors here in the university about whether they'll give us any money to employ the people that we need to uh, you know, do the stuff for three. But we have some ideas. Uh, we I'm, have I'm enjoying it too. And some of the areas that I'd like to see are non-classical logics and yeah. uh, modal logics and, and some of the other things that uh, you and uh, Graham specialize in. Yeah, sure. So this is, I mean, you'll notice if you, if you dig into, there is actually a little bit of modal logic in the subject. Uh, it's hidden. Uh, but it's in the digital systems application because all of the stuff on sequential digital systems is is actually temporal logic. It's actually mm -hmm. uh, talking about how the state of this, you know, the machine, how the state of the circuit at some time depends on the state at earlier times or might constrain the state at later times. And you can describe all of this using quantifiers and talk about for all times and for some time and all of that, but the, the fragment of first order predicate logic that you use is actually a modal fragment. And uh, so there is a little bit of modal logic that's there in that application. Uh, and there is this, is, this is what we are thinking we would do for logic three, is to do some non-classical logic. Uh, and we don't, one thing in our initial thoughts is that this might not have the same structure as um, uh, here is the core stuff and here are the applications. Uh, because uh, the way that the core, the way that the core techniques are invented, is actually, I mean, it might be that use, uh, talking about some of the applications more specifically early on might might be uh, an important thing to do to to help model that what's going on. But we're not really sure how to do that yet. Um, so we'll keep you posted. Thanks. Looking forward to it. Great. Well, thank you very much, guys. I've really enjoyed it. Um, apparently, this video is going to be up there on YouTube um, after I approve it or something, and I might edit the boring bits where you see me <laughs> staring in front of the computer saying, where the hell is everybody? Or, no, well, I didn't say that, but uh, <laughs> one, uh, where, what was happening. Uh, I might uh, top and tail this 
uh, would you be happy if uh, we po we posted a link somewhere in the forums and let LOI people know that you know this discussion is there if anybody wants to see some people talking to each other um, or do you think uh, I mean, in one sense, it's not really specifically about the content of the subject, and it may not be helpful for people. Uh, but do you, do you think it would be, uh, or do you think um, here it is? This is an ephemeral thing where we've had a conversation. I think it would help other students because it really gives a kind of meta idea of how the course is run and helps them understand it and everything. Okay, Valentina, what do you reckon? Um, I wouldn't mind if you wanted to put it up because it would give people an idea of what to put on the final feedback. Yep. survey to you, because okay, it's great. questions you've asked us. Yep. Terrific. That's great. Well, thanks for your permission with that. I'll have a look and see how easy it is, or how I can do this, and um, I will let you know when something is posted so that you can take a look. Awesome. Thank you. Great. Thank you very much, guys. I hope you enjoy the evening, the day, and I look forward to seeing you around. Mm -hmm. Okay. Good talk. Ya.